Did we get 28 damage on our opponent's face with an Arcane Devour while getting guaranteed progress on the Demon Hunter achievement? Yes. Yes, we did. Huh. This should be interesting. So, it's been a little while since we did one of these commentary videos where we talk over the gameplay that was recorded off stream because there wasn't actually any conversation going on during the recording. The gameplay in the background right now is today's Hearthstone highlight, and we're going to go ahead and introduce the deck right now during game one because of the four games we've got, it still had some interesting points, but it's not quite as exciting as the rest. So we built this Proving Frenzied Life deck so that we could get guaranteed progress on the even playing field Demon Hunter achievement. This deck was built specifically so that all 8 minions that we could potentially pull from Proving Grounds will be guaranteed to survive hitting each other. Unfortunately, as Imprisoned Antion doesn't give progress when you pull it, we went ahead and cut that from the deck. However, there are some very unusual inclusions that turned out to be really good. First off, we've got a little bit of a lifesteal package together with Ilganoth, who's guaranteed to get 4 damage in on the opponent's face when pulled off of Proving Grounds. And then we've got a couple Frenzy minions, Gold Road Grunt and Taraho Brave, who are both guaranteed to trigger their Frenzies when pulled off of Proving Grounds. So we'll get a bit of armor and a decent taunt, or we'll manage to kill one of the opponent's minions, whether they be Divine Shielded, huge, whatever. And then the Bone Chewer Vanguards become a lot more threatening right away, thanks to Proving Grounds. And then finally, we've got a very peculiar inclusion that most opponents don't play around very well. Arcane Devourer. If the opponent isn't able to deal with Arcane Devourer right away, we've got a ton of cheap spells in the deck which we can use to build Arcane Devourer to ginormous proportions, as you saw in the intro. So while it may not be the strongest build of Proving Grounds Demon Hunter, we went 11 and 7 with the deck, giving us a 61% win rate. And uh, yeah, it was quite a bit of fun to play. So check out this highlight and let me know what you think. And now you've got Commentary Alchemist. So I'm going to be watching the gameplay with you and commenting either on what's happening or what I was thinking while it was going on. Uh, so here, of course, you've seen in the background we're playing against a Taunt Aggro Druid and um, they are leaving our Arcane Devourer alone and uh, we decided to go ahead and trade off a Razor Mane Battle Guard uh, there so that we don't get terribly punished by a play like this. They would have had two Grey Bows if we hadn't uh, taken out the Razor Mane there. Um, though it was tempting to deal 8 damage to their face instead of just the 4. Uh, so a little bit of a tricky situation, Grey Bell always presents, but, um, and a, so yeah, we already did a Proving Grounds earlier in the game, um, and this is just the mop-up cleanup. So it looks like Grey Bell went on to a Squirrel, meaning we can take out what they've got going on here pretty handily. Now we do decide this time to go ahead and go face, because we've seen both oracles of a loon. Uh, so we shouldn't get quite so terribly punished by uh, going ahead and trying for the uh, finish up. But they do have Arbor Up, of course, uh, to punish us a little bit. And um, they go ahead and get Greybow out here. Now, uh, if memory serves, they're going to do something a little bit surprising here, uh, which is not terribly smart. So they go ahead and trade in the uh, Vibrant Squirrel, and then they decide to end their turn. They're afraid to trade in their Razor Mane, even though they have 8 mana. They can play their taunts, um, and so we get to punish them. Uh, now, we had so many different ways we could have finished this off. Uh, decided to go ahead and trade in Ilganoth first, and we could have killed them with a sizable um, Arcane Devourer. However, we decided to just go ahead and play it safe. Now, the only thing we were a little bit scared about here was another taunt coming off of the um, Teacher's Pet, but yeah, it wasn't a problem. So. Took them down. Now this is the least exciting of the four games we've got uh, to share with you today. 
And uh, so next up is against a priest. And um, you might anticipate that this could possibly be the video from the intro uh, that we showed that little brief preview. And then, um, so our opponent's playing a little bit of an interesting build of Priest. You don't typically see Reliquary of Souls all that much, but um, we do have Proving Grounds in our opening hand, which is exciting to see. And uh, now there are eight large minions we can pull off of Proving Grounds. And um, sometimes, sometimes we manage to draw five or so before we can get to our second Proving Grounds, which uh, does stall our progress on the achievement. Uh, when that happens, it's a little bit sad, but overall, um, we tend not to be quite that unlucky. So go ahead and take that out. Um, no point in going face too much when they've got that sitting out there. And uh, a little bit sad to use one of our weapon charges on it, but eh, whatever. Okay, so next turn we'll have five mana. I assume we're going to toss out the Gold Road Grunt. Um, especially if our opponent's not putting any pressure themselves. Though they do have double discounts on all their stuff, thanks to Palm Reading. Uh, yes, Gold Road Grunt. And without anything out there, there's a good chance we get a fair bit of armor off of that. Now we're just in a waiting room for the Proving Grounds, uh, because that is the wonderful card that this deck is entirely built around. Uh, I need to practice my commentary skills. <laughs> but anyways, we're going with it. Uh, okay, so here, if we got the Taraho Braves, one of those would be dead right away, and we'd be able to kill off the other one with the weapon and the Gold Road Grunt. We could possibly leave them out there, but, um, and we have to leave one of them out there, but continuing to allow them to draw a bunch of cards. Now, they're such full hand at the moment, they might actually get punished by those not being able to be killed. Them taking our Ilganoth hurt so bad. Oh, that was annoying. Um, but fortunately, we do have ways. Now, they considered Ilganoth the greater threat which normally makes sense, but I don't think they really understood the threat which uh, Ilganoth poses, I mean, which uh, Arcane Devourer poses. And we were able to handily deal with Ilganoth here, thanks to uh, Chaos Leech and Bell Barrage. And yeah, so they do get punished. They burn a card thanks to the Banker. Um, which, so perhaps we could have left the bankers out there a little bit longer, though they probably would have played a bit differently. So here, we've got a 10-10. Now, in the back of my mind, I do remember this part. I'm like, tell me they don't have Shadow Word Death, and they haven't managed to generate a Shadow Word Death or a Shadow Word Rune. Because heavens, I, I don't want this massive Arcane Devourer to die. And then it's like, oh, that's a very nice top deck. Knock out two Divine Shields all at once and take out the Thalmas. Sure, we draw him a card, but so be it. Um, let's get some card draw, see if we can actually draw into something that'll let us punch with our Arcane Devourer. Um, unfortunately, no, nothing here allows us to get through and punch them in the face. Maybe we can discover a cheap spell? Nope, okay, uh, let's go with card draw, see if we can get something better. Still nothing. Okay, so we're not getting through these, um, so let's go ahead and take in the Devourer and punch at least three damage to the face. So, again, Shadow Word Death or Shadow Word Ruin both deal with the 16, uh, 14, but otherwise we're in a great spot. Okay, so they get to heal. They'll be back at full health when we take out that 6-6. Six, six. Um, ooh, Proving Grounds. Love it. Okay, so achievement progress made. And that was those were our final minions. So we were fortunate to draw those before our last um, or one more minion. 
And the Taraha Brave nicely deals with that, allowing us to punch them hard. Now, a uh, little bit of a misplay here. They actually were dead if I had played Fury instead of Sigil of Alacrity there. Um, did I realize this after the fact? Yes. So, sweating bullets, I'm like, oh gosh. Uh, okay, can they punish me for not uh, doing lethal there? Because I played the Sigil of Alacrity instead. Fury was lethal, oh gosh. Okay, so they're gonna heal for 16, but you know what? We've got so much damage out there, I'm sure we can put it together. Let's see if we can do it in a creative way. Um, if we can get a self-damage spell, then um, we might actually be able to trigger this Taraho Brave and uh, destroy one of those from hand. And we do have enough mana for Chaos Leech and Taro Brave, especially with the discount. And uh, that is going to make our Arcane Devourer even bigger. So yeah, let's go ahead and take that line. And um, then we can bash our opponent's final minion and smack them in the face for 28 damage from this Arcane Devourer. Feels good. <laughs> 10 overkill, not bad. And we had even more damage sitting on the board. So that was a very nice finish. And then uh, on to game three of four. Uh, we've got a very nice draw hand to start with. And um, unfortunately nothing to do on one. Though this deck, really the only cards that we would consider playing on one are Sigil of Alacrity and maybe sometimes, especially if we've got a cheap hand, uh, Illidari studies because we can probably get to whatever we discover um, over the course of a couple turns but a lot of times we get stuck with a uh, proving grounds or a big minion that's gonna block our outcast position so um, anyways this is looking to be a buff paladin or a Libram paladin or buff Libram <laughs> don't know that those are mutually exclusive um, again, drawing minions, but since we have a Proving Grounds in hand, we'll probably be fine, and ooh. Okay, Proving Grounds number two. So this is very nice, and we can handily deal with all their stuff. Now we could have attacked in with the Aldrachi Warblades last turn, but I kind of wanted to keep them in reserve. Even though we had another Aldrachi Warblades in hand, I probably should have killed that first Alliance Bannerman the first turn, and then we'd have 30 health here. but. Not perfect plays, and which means, with imperfect plays, we still had an exceptional win rate with this deck. Um, I believe this was while we were still climbing back uh, after a ladder reset. We were around Diamond 10 for all of these games. Um, now, we don't usually play to Legend, we usually stop around Diamond 5 and switch to full meme decks. So, um, this you can kind of gauge where our MMR is based on that. But, so it's a Librum buff paladin. We got the Elganoth here. And opponents are always surprised to see the 6-6 six, six Bone Chewer Vanguard. Uh, but really, Elganoth here going ahead and punching in some damage, allowing us to uh, present some serious counter pressure to our opponent. And let's see. So we've got 10 damage showing, but of course they have the taunt. And it looks like they are able to kill the Vanguard, unfortunately. However, Ilganoth is sitting pretty at a 4-4. So the nerf to Ilganoth actually helps this deck immensely. Uh, because the extra health and uh, extra attack makes them much more threatening. We're not really going for an OTK. We don't have enough of lifesteal in this deck for an OTK. Ilganoth getting to go face here means 8 more damage, which is great. Uh, putting them down to 15. I don't... Th no, they do have enough discounts. If they had a Librum of Hope here, they could have healed for 8 and stuck a really big roadblock in my way. Um... Fortunately, they didn't have that. However, Devout Pupil with Divine Shield is annoying. 
but um, we might have some options here, considering that we have Aldrachi Warblades in hand, so more lifesteal, and quite a few weapon buffs, uh, which is precisely the direction we went. And with all these weapon buffs, especially with Felscreen Blast there, uh, but actually Fury just does one more damage, our opponent can see that we've got... Uh, let's see, punch them, punch that for 9, and then Elganoth does another 8, so that was 17 damage. I think our opponent was like at 15, so overkill by 2. So they were dead, and they realized it. Uh, and then now on to the final game. So against a face hunter, it looks like. Um, and we've got our Sigil of Alacrity start. So I don't think we got to see the first turn. Uh, I don't think I was recording quite yet. Uh, that's what happens off stream sometimes, is I don't record necessarily the entire game, every game. Um, we're just looking for footage for the background of the achievement guide videos, but um, when it's a fun deck like this, that's I realize, oh hey, we're getting some interesting highlights here. Uh, we can turn it into a commentary video. Then I'll go ahead and start recording. Um, now Kurtrus I really was considering taking here, but we couldn't play him out right away. And we had quite a few things blocking him from getting back into an outcast position. Still might have been a really good take. Um, because against Face Hunter, knocking out their minions um, is very nice. However, we got rewarded with uh, another Proving Grounds, and um, so that's going to hopefully help us stabilize when we uh, manage to play it out. So we need two more mana than we have right now. Could go ahead and kill that Whoppertinger with a Fel Barrage, but why bother? And sinking four damage into that feels a little bit bad, so we went ahead and went face here. Um, I mean, four damage into a minion, not terribly exciting, um, especially, well, but realizing we would like to follow up with a Taraho Brave, um, here, we go ahead and say, oh, okay. Maybe I did take unnecessarily one extra damage. I go ahead and take the Wolf Retainer. I probably should have just gone face here because they did have the True Aim Crescent, which the True Aim Crescent tells us they've got Tundra Rhinos probably in hand or at least in their deck. Um, and then here we see the Warsong Wrangler and um, they only have one choice. Uh, and I believe, yes, they play the Wolf Retainers, which means they almost certainly have both Trampling Rhinos already in hand. Um, but of course, we don't care. We're just gonna go Proving Grounds and um, get our big counter threats out there. And also, it is nice to know that the Warsong Wrangler buff didn't go on the Trampling Rhino, which means they're a maximum of 5-5. Five five. And this 6-6 six six body out there is a very nice way to uh, deal with that. Now they do leave Actually, here they miss three face damage, because if they had attacked in with the True Aim Crescent after punching the Wolpertinger face, that still would have died. So, a little bit of a misplay on their part, but we made plenty of misplays ourselves. Um, and there's four more face damage and four armor, uh, which is awesome. Love getting it. You get at least three armor if the Gold Road grunts are the ones to hit each other. Um, but otherwise, you almost always get um, four armor with this deck. And you end up with a 3-3 taunt in the way, which is very, very nice. And of course, here uh, we've got just slight overkill. <laughs> and take down the uh, face hunter. And that's it. Those are the highlights. So now we're going to transition to the outro. Right now? <laughs> All right, and that's it this time. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, be sure to tap that like button, smash that subscribe button, and share your thoughts in the comments below. We release videos here every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. Also, if you enjoy participating in Experiments Live, check out our stream at twitch.tv forward slash ssalchemist. We currently stream on Saturdays and Sundays. There's a link to our Discord server in the description as well if you'd like to check it out. And remember, you're awesome. Thank you for watching and have an awesome day.